what packaging is exactly. We're then going to take a look at the reasons for packaging, from consolidation to protection to information that packages give to the brand identification and then sales promotion. And lastly, we're going to take a look at what makes effective packaging. What makes one product stand out in terms of its packaging versus another one? Packaging is an essential part of the product. It's done for every product because it helps to convey that identity of the brand and the image of the product. It is the design, the science, the art, the technology, all of those things in terms of enclosing and protecting products for distribution, for storage, for sale, and for use. It's what we know of in terms of many products. We recognize products in terms of their packaging. We don't necessarily recognize specific corn flakes, but we recognize the package that corn flakes comes in. Raw materials, often we see large bags, sacks, or drums. Consumer products, we often see boxes, bottles, cans, etc. And for service and retail stores, packaging is the actual physical layout of the store. How a store is packaged is in terms of how it's laid out. So there are several reasons for packaging, from consolidation to protection to information to brand identification and then sales promotion. So let's take a look at each in detail. So consolidation is the first reason for packaging. It is the main reason for packaging. This idea is that you have 12 cans of Coke. How do you get 12 cans of Coke or other cola beverages to the consumer? Well, you consolidate those 12 cans into a nice 12-pack packaging. It's easier to ship it this way. It's easier to store it this way. It's easier to display this kind of product on the shelf rather than individual cans. It keeps the product together. So liquids, how else are you going to get the liquid, so milk let's say, to the consumer? Well, you need to put it into a bottle, into a jar, into a bag. Hard goods, you put these in boxes, in plastic containers, and bulk goods, in large boxes, in, in containers. We even see this for fruits and vegetables and many produce items. Right? They need to be consolidated into an easy-to-ship kind of packaging. The second reason for packaging is protection. We need to protect products from breaking, from being tampered with, or from going bad. Many products would go bad much, much earlier if it wasn't for the packaging. Milk, for example, if you left milk out on the counter, right, it would go bad very quickly. Therefore, we put it into packaging, and until you open that package, it could stay for a longer period of time. So we bubble wrap packaging. We put them into foam or plastic or styrofoam containers. We put perishable goods in shrink wrap, in cans, in other types of packaging. Right? We put cotton in medicine bottles. This will help protect the product from going bad earlier. We also put safety seals and childproof caps on many items such as Tylenol and Advil because we don't want it being tampered with. And for a great example of why we do this, all you need to do is look back to the huge Chicago Tylenol tampering case that happened years ago. That's the very reason why we have childproof and tampered proof safe caps. The next reason for packaging is to convey information to the consumer. Now, the law requires many pieces of information on labels and food packages. Producers will provide this information on their own, but they also have to, and that's an important distinction here. They have to put on food packages ingredients, nutritional information, the name and address of manufacture, a universal product code, the net quantity of the product, the serving size, how to store the product, a best before date, assembly or cooking instructions, and health warnings. All of these are requirements by the Canadian government. It's to help the consumer, it's to inform the consumer, and it's to make it easier for the consumer to understand the product. So we take it for granted that all this information happens on packaging, but it's a requirement. Now for other types of products, you'll find various other pieces of information, and this is just as important. Consumers need to know exactly what the product is and does. The next reason for packaging is brand identification. Very effective branding will include packaging and thus certain packaged products, even without a label, you can identify the brand. Coca-Cola bottle, for instance, is a package that is very, very distinctive. You can identify that anywhere. So it identifies the product for the consumer. It stands out from the competition. And when you are able to do this, you have a proprietary design. It's protected. And no other 
manufacturer can copy this proprietary design. So when you want a package that stands out, that catches the consumer's eye, that identifies the product, you want to make it colorful, eye-catching. You want the product name prominent somewhere on the label or the package itself. And by doing so, you will have effectively identified your brand. The last reason for packaging is promotion. Packaging can act as that silent salesperson. It can be that last piece of promotion to encourage the consumer to purchase the product. So it's another way to promote and advertise your brand or your event. So for instance, when you go to the movie theater and you buy the super size uh, cola drink and it comes in this souvenir glass or cup, that's a take home cup, that's a promotional item. It has the movie or some movie identified on it. Limited edition packaging is also promotional tools. You might already have an Xbox, but because it's an Xbox that is designed for a specific game, Gears of War or something like this, um, you might go out and buy that actual Xbox as well. And another way to encourage your product and consumers to buy your product through promotional type packaging is to state that your package is environmentally friendly. Many consumers now are looking for environmentally friendly packaging. They're not looking for packages that have I don't know, 15 layers of plastic that you need a crowbar to get through. That's annoying for consumers. And so many consumers are looking for packages that state that they're environmentally friendly, that they're recyclable. And this is a promotional type tool done by manufacturers. Okay, so tying this all together, what makes effective packaging? One, it's got to be creative and unique. It's got to stand out. It's got to be distinct. It's got to be different. Appropriate colors and fonts. If you're brand is a certain color, your packaging should represent that brand as well and should have the appropriate color associated with that package. The label should be easy to read. If you use calligraphy type font or really difficult to read font, people might not recognize your product. Images are always beneficial to the consumer. Again, think about yourself. Are you a visual learner? If you are, you probably are drawn to packages that have visuals. The packaging should be relevant to the product. A product such as beans, I don't think it needs to go in a package such as a cardboard container. It's not very very relevant to the product. Appropriate language, it shouldn't be offensive. It should also state exactly what's in the package. Including necessary and legal information, this is a requirement, so you need to make sure you do this. Easy to access the product inside. If you ever purchase something where you need scissors and then you need a crowbar and then you need a hammer and then you need all sorts of other tools to open it you will be very frustrated with this packaging you'll probably not buy the product again I always love those packages that are you buy a pair of scissors but you need a pair of scissors to open that package makes no sense to me another thing doesn't look tampered if you if a package has that look that it's roughed up it's beaten up it's not really an effective package. You want your package to look fresh and clean and doesn't look tampered. And lastly, simple. Keep it simple, silly. Simple packaging oftentimes stands out. And so many of those examples you see on this, this slide, you can see it's very, very simple, and yet they're very eye-catching. Well, this brings us to our end of the video. So, it's question time. How important is the packaging to brand identification? Why is this why do we require packaging so much in terms of identifying brands? Identify two different brands in their packaging. What sets them apart? Is one brand's packaging more effective? Why is that? So think about these questions. Make sure you've summarized your notes, you've added your own discussion questions, and you are coming to class prepared. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's all. That's everything. We'll see you next time.